Today we're going to look at a pneumatically actuated globe valve and I'm going to explain to you how it works and we're going to look at some of the main components. So here we have the exterior view of a pneumatically actuated globe valve. I'm just going to refer to it as a globe valve from now on, otherwise the video is going to get quite long. So we've got the body of the valve, that's this section that we're looking at in the centre of the screen now. And then we've got the top of the body, which is held on by these nuts. That is referred to as the bonnet. The bonnet is essentially the top part of the body and it's the piece that we can remove to get to the internals. In other words, if we need to maintain the valve. We've then got a stem in the middle, which sometimes people call the spindle. That's this vertical shaft going up the middle there. We've got an indicator. That is this arrow, and we'll use this to indicate if the valve is open or closed. And if we keep going up, we can now see the pneumatic part of the valve. This is the exterior of the pneumatic actuator, as we call it. So two different areas. So the body down here, this is completely mechanical. The indicator in the middle and the pneumatic section on the top. So let's now have a look at a cross section. And we can see inside now, what we've actually got is a diaphragm. That's this black area on the top of the springs. You can see I'm looking straight at it now. Underneath the diaphragm, we've got a spring. In fact, we've got two springs. And below that, we go down, we've got our indicator again and the shaft comes down here and connects onto this item which people refer to as a disc or sometimes a lid and that is going to move up or down and that is essentially going to open or close the valve. This type of valve is called a globe valve and we can see from its shape it shapes slightly like a globe if you've got a very warped sense of vision. And the type of glow valve that it is, is called a straight flow valve or a Z type valve. The Z referring to the flow coming down here and then going back up and then back out. Obviously we can't do that at the moment because the valve is closed. But let's play the animation and we can see what happens when we drain the air from the system. We can see it's moving back up. So what just happened, I'm going to back it up again. At the top, in this space, this whole compartment above the diaphragm, so above the black area at the bottom, this is all full of compressed air. Now this is going to be six or seven bar of pressure. And when we flood that area with compressed air, which is coming through this connection in the middle of the screen, we're going to apply the air, the pressure comes in and it pushes the diaphragm down. What it's actually doing is overcoming the spring tension and it is compressing the springs. So the compressed air is pushing down and putting those springs under compression. So when we do that we are actually, the final result is that we are pushing the, the lid or the disc down onto an area which they refer to as the seat. The seat is this area here, it's where the lid meets the body. If you have any sort of contamination in this area the valve will actually leak so the, the seat is very very important as is the, the lid bit that sits on it. Let's zoom out a little bit more. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to open a valve and I'm going to drain the air from this entire section. So everything above the black diaphragm which is normally just a piece of sort of nitrile rubber which is actually quite flexible. I'm going to drain the air. And when I drain the air, the pressure within this area is going to reduce. So let's do that now. And that's what happens. When I drain the air, the pressure drops and the springs, which were held under compression, are suddenly able then to expand again. And when they expand, the result is, because the diaphragm is connected to the valve stem, if we go down, we can see the valve is now open and the flow of liquid will come down here, 
back up here and then out that way. That's the Z flow that we were talking about earlier. That's why it's called a Z type valve or also a straight type or straight flow valve. And that is essentially how we can control the valve, how we can make it open or close. So let's watch that again. And you can also watch our indicator. Imagine that now we had an O where the indicator is pointing now. So we'd normally have an O here and down here we would have a, a C for example, or maybe we'd have green and red or something like that. And that indicates to us visually what the position of the valve is. Okay, the pressure is applied. Pressure is applied, it pushes the diaphragm down. The springs are now under compression. The stem moves down and the stem ultimately closes the lid or pushes the disc onto the seat and that closes the valve. So all we did there was yeah, open the compressed air to the diaphragm. Let's have a look now what happens when we drain the air. We drain the air and the springs due to the tension or the stored energy that they have, they expand and they have now opened the valve again. We actually refer to this as a spring open air close. So when people talk about it, they'll say, oh, it's spring open air closed. And that means what the default position is, is when there is no air, the valve will be open. And this is quite an important concept because a lot of times valves like this, they will have a certain position they should default back to in the event of power loss or a loss of air. The last thing you want when you lose power or your supply of air is that the valves all just stay where they are or they switch to a position that is actually worse than if they had stayed where they are. So for example, maybe you lose power and you want to completely isolate a steam system. Well, if you've lost power, and the air drains and it leaves it in the open position and steam just flows through the valve, that's the opposite of what you wanted. So what you'd actually do, you would change the valve setup that we have here and you'd make it so that instead of on the loss of air, you actually left the valve open, you would say on the loss of air, the valve should return to fully closed. So that's its sort of safety position. Obviously there are different ways to actuate valves. This glow valve is ideal in the open or closed position, and that's something that we can do pretty well by controlling the air by making it on or off. But it would not be so ideal if we needed to throttle the valve, and that means to move it between a position that is not fully open or fully closed. That's what we refer to as throttling. And this type of actuation would not be ideal because it'd be quite difficult to gauge the position of the valve using compressed air. It's not impossible, but there are other ways to do it which are more reliable. However, for fully open and fully closed, pneumatic actuation, that is actuation with air, is ideal. You can also hydraulically actuate a valve like this, and that is actuating it with liquid. And one of the other options that you might go for is simple hand mechanical actuation, or perhaps you would use an electric motor and you could also vary the position of the valve in that way.